Welcome to the MBS Show, Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Today is all about the quality of character. Ah, oh, yes. Also, don't steal my Ose. <laughs> Just make sure it's consistent. <laughs> also, do. Don't not steal. <laughs> uh, also, joining us today is Jacob. Hey, everyone. So. We- I, I think we telegraphed this a while back, but in today's uh, well discussion, we are going to talk about the characters we make and how we make them. Title still working. Uh, probably I'll find a better one. If not, this this will be it. <laughs> but uh, in, in this discussion, we're going to talk about how what inspired us to build our characters, how we built them, and what was the process in building them. So, before we start, um, I-, I joked earlier on about oh, um, uh, characters and OCs are the same, but you guys said that not really. So, Silver, what is an OC versus characters that you make? Well, I guess I'm just a little confused on the topic. Are we talking about how like I develop my Silver Quill? Mm. Or how I developed like clutter step. I, I think clutter step, like because um, we were talking about when we were doing this discussion way back when we were talking about the characters that we built and so on. Okay, so a genuine character because mm. Silver Quill is mostly me just ramped up to eleven or twenty. So that's an OC then. Mm, I would guess so. Yes. Oh, okay. Or or at least my persona uh, avatar. Uh, Avatars, oh, that's a good one. Although most people will think of a blue furry cat person or a bald child with an arrow on his head. Or a angsty teen lady. I'm a blue griffin. <laughs> oh, there we go. So true. And I'm dirt. <laughs> now, it depends. Some people, to call something a true character, I think is, is a higher standard than most people give credit. Anyone can say, oh, I've made this great character, but they've only got like three traits to them. They, their job, their, who they're dating, and uh, a special power. That's not really a character. That's the start towards a character. That is a protoplasmic, pr- uh, not, not quite, but incubating into a character. See, that's exactly why you don't make character sheets. They, let's just say they don't function very well. Oh, that, that's the total opposite of what I have then. <laughs> because, um, uh-huh. so yeah, um, for for me, when I build a character, and this is in the context of D&D, where character sheets matter. You need their stats, you need their blah, 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 and so on. So for me, if I were to build a character nowadays, I would probably go for the D&D route and use that as the skeleton for uh, building my character. And then uh, probably if this is a fantasy world or if this is a modern world, depending on the genre and theme, I'll probably go D&D and just say, okay, uh, I need to build a character fast. Uh, I'll probably go for the stereotypical uh, Bard, so his charisma is high, uh, and he doesn't really have that much strength, but he's wise, and y- you know all, all those stuff. So that's how I would build a character nowadays. So well, I guess can, that's more of uh, oh no, sorry, finish. Yeah, so so that's how I would build the base of a character. Yeah, that's I think that's more of a gameplay oriented thing than uh, well. Uh, narrative uh, thing. Um, Go ahead. I usually start with a scenario and an event in a story that sort of comes into fruition, into being. And, well, the characters are there, but it's almost like, well, okay, these folks are here. Why should I care? And it's only after I've had a few scenarios in my mind that I can say, okay, so how does this character feel while this is going on? 
Mm-hmm. And what does that say about them? And you start to get to know the character once you've you've put them in a situation. Mm, yeah, I, I, I agree with that one. So uh, bef- before we uh, before we just add in some info here and there, uh, I, I think I'll just start with my character that I've built and uh, played around and just developed. And mind you, this is a D&D campaign I'm having. And this character that I've built is, well, uh, his name is Gregory the Librarian. He is a Goliath Barbarian. And that would kind of put you in the mindset of, okay, uh, he is a mostly a joke character because ha, barbarians in D&D are not typically the smartest, uh, the sharpest two in the shed. But somehow I played him pretty well. And the thing is, started out as a joke because I just wanted to try to play as a barbarian and see how it goes. And in the end, um, to where I am now, he's fully developed. Like, wow. And by that, I mean, here's the thing. Um, use him, like, um, technically, uh, build him to just try out a gameplay feature. So, didn't really put much effort into his character, except that he, uh, he he's, uh, for, for context, like, um, you got to have at least some sense of background for your characters. So, he's been flung to a faraway land uh, to, let's just say, usually D&D setting is in uh, Europe. He's flung into Asia, something Japan. So, there, already cultural difference. And then you get things like uh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I set his character to be like, okay, he's there because he needs to find a certain weapon for his boss that he's working for, and go. Oh, also, he has some background history of being a professional wrestler for his boss and whatnot, and so on. So this is what I've built in my brain, getting him started. And as the campaign goes on, he slowly develops into a more of a gentle giant character where he likes, he, he wants to take care of his friends, uh, make sure they don't get hurt. So, but at the same time, too, most of his friends are just strange and he, he just rolls with it. And somehow down the line, he, develop cooking as a trait and somehow the my, my gm kind of likes it and just says okay you don't really need to do anything about it like no 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 roles no nothing just say, i just say it and yeah he does it and from slowly from there on um i built the character from a goofball to a lovable goofball who likes to cook so, for me, building a character that way and depending on how the story is being told is pretty fun. Uh, so, let's move on to... Silver, what about you? How, how did you build Cutterstack? Oh. Ah, well. Part of it was... How do I put this? It started with a desire to see... Uh, some positive male characters in the show because season one and much of season two, if there was a dude in the show, he was probably going to be an antagonist. Uh, that was a given. I feel like it balanced out towards the end of the series, but for a show aimed at girls, they tend to emphasize female characters. Makes sense. But when you start making all your antagonists male, then you start to think, hey, hang on. That's that's like saying every girl is just waiting a damsel waiting to be rescued. Uh, so I started coming up with a character, but 
I went through a lot of iterations. This was before Flash Sentry and Shining Armor hit the scene. So I wondered about what if there was a captain of the guard? No, wait, I'm making my care I'm making the character too high placed, maybe too high powered. Well, what if he was an earth pony? Okay, that's an interesting idea, but what more? What what could be a personal vice? And I've wondered if <clears throat> with the array of three pony with three pony tribes, has there ever been envy of their uh you know, do you ever did uh, Earth Pony ever wish they had a unicorn horn uh, or Pegasus wings? Because let's face it, Earth Pony's kind of got the short end of the stick. Until G five. Uh, Until G five. I mean, Earth Pony G four had their advantages, but it's not really that clear from what I understand. Well, I always remember. Uh, Twilight Sparkle and the Crystal Heart Spell, uh, a book released shortly after her ascension to Alicorn Hood. Mm. They described her as having the majestic wings of a Pegasus, the powerful horn of a unicorn, and an Earth Pony's good heart. <laughs> That's like saying, yeah, sorry, Earth Ponies, you, you've got a great personality. Heart. I'm sure. Heart. But what is it? Nothing. But at the same time. Nothing physical, huh? Yeah, but, but nope. at the same time, to Earth Ponies, when, when you really analyze and look at them, they're robust. They 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 are strong. They're gra- well, that's it. When you analyze them, when you look deeper, yes. Mm. But surface impressions. So this could be a story of a character who is at first envious, but comes to recognize their own self worth. Mm, so. So, and so that's the start of your character, where ah, made a character to be envious of all the other races and give them an arc where ah, I don't have to be jealous of them. Exactly, and well, furthermore, slapstick is a, a, a fun thing for me. Couple that with you know you don't want this character to be they can't recognize their earth pony strength right away, especially if being an earth, even an earth pony isn't working out for them. So I imagine, well, what if bad luck followed this character around? Or if in a weird way, he was always there at the worst moment, but the luck worked out in ways you didn't expect. It's not good luck, but it's protective luck. Ah, I see. So that's when I started coming up with a name. Okay. Uh, clumsy. Uh, disjointed. Clutter. Oh, clutter. Clutter. Step. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds like something out of this show. Yeah. That sounds like it could work. And from there, things have... Uh, mm, ideas just pop in. I've actually got slew of clutter step adventures in my head, but... Well, since I started doing YouTube videos and all, he's unfortunately taking a back seat. Uh, too too bad for the poor dude. Like he he really, <laughs> and when you really think about it, Silver, uh, that's class the step for you. <laughs> it's true, and it's funny. Uh, one of my friends recently learned. Wait, you you ship your OC with Twilight Sparkle? Yes, I like the idea of the of a earth pony winning the heart of an alicorn because for so often people seem to ship like high power characters together i like the idea of simple charm kind of like the princess and the pauper Mm -hmm. falling in love and he's like but you're shipping your character with your oc with the show character yes i know that's a cardinal sin (laughs) But I'm willing to walk that treacherous road. I mean, it's just to see if I can make it make it believable. Uh, if you write it right, yes, it can. But uh, no, no comments, man. No comments. But I, I like the concept, Silver. Like having them uh, evolve over time. Yeah, that, that that is a good one. That is a good one. So. When when writing for clutter, right, or when building clutter, have you noticed any quirk that he has somehow developed? 
Well, let's see here. Actually, uh, yes, he has, with all the problems that seem to come up and all the ways that it can go really wrong for him, he's actually categorized everything. A bit like Twilight, he makes lists in his head for scenarios that ways could go wrong and how he responds. He even has a way, like the top 50 ways he expects he might die. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, this here, here's an idea. Uh, in G1, there was a giant spider-esque monster called Og. I don't know if you guys remember him or if you've ever seen him. He was in My Little Pony, the oh, movie, that. and. Oh, the six, let's see, how does one even 60, spell Og? Uh, yep. 63 movie? Sorry, the 93 movie. Yes. 83 movie, sorry, my bad. 83 movie, and yeah, no, I'm not quite that old, thank you very much. <laughs> 63 movie, indeed. Harumph. My bad. Nah, I'm just I'm just giving you a hard time. But no, uh, oh wow, we 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 go way back. We go way back. But I thought, would it be fun to introduce Og as a character in G in G four? So, at first, I picture Clutter. He's fallen into the web, and here's this giant spider advancing, and all Clutter says is scenario forty three. <laughs> <laughs> and then the spider backs off and actually starts talking in somewhat broken English of what is Senar E O. <laughs> and Og became my version of the the person in the cave, the parable of someone who has left ignorance behind but is blinded by the world outside. And the temptation. So Og is very curious about the world, but cannot, but has never been able to interact with it because, well, mostly he, everyone's afraid of a giant spider. Obviously. So he, uh, he learns little bits of English or whatever the hey, oh, Ponish, mm. from what he overhears but there's a lot of words he just doesn't know. And he becomes a voracious reader uh, to become more acquainted. Even his name is like, Clutter asks, well, what, what do people call you? Oh, they say, ah! <laughs> okay, um, Og. And there you go. That's how he's named. I love it. I love it. So a lot of it, is, I, sometimes I feel like a character is at their best when you just, you turn off trying to force them. And instead, it's almost like you're listening in, you're transcribing. Your imagination gets the momentum going. And new characters and situations are, are sort of birthed off that. However, much like much like your D&D &D sheets, there are folks who have created... Uh, character questionnaires to help flesh out said characters. Oh. Uh, for for example, uh, Melissa B. Newton on her blog has put together 40 plus personal questions for your character. <laughs> uh, these can include what topics are they passionate about? What topics could they never learn enough about? Oh. What are their three favorite smells? <laughs> oh, wow. Are they a cuddler? What are their allergies? What peeves them? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is something good to build a character trait on. Like, yeah, to be honest, we all want to have that overpower character where he is a demon lord from a other world and he's just the most superpower, awesome character ever. Uh, insert Isekai here. But... At the same time, too, having character quirks is fun. As long as they don't overwhelm the character. Uh, 
it sounds like you have personal experience in this. Well, let's just say that uh, <coughs> there are characters we've seen in current media that are sort of uh, a bit much to say. <sighs> yeah, um, yeah, no, no comment on that one because certain people like to write their characters certain ways. I, you know what? I'll I'll be fascinated to ask Greg to do this. This 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 looks fun. Well, you know what they say. Some people are quirky, others have personalities. <laughs> so, Jacob, what about you? Uh, how, how did you build your characters? Oh, okay. <laughs> characters. I thought you were going to say a character and I was going to say which one. Yeah, because no, well, uh, uh... Since, since you're a story writer, you have many. And uh, I didn't... I would say pick one of your favorites, but that's saying like pick one of your favorite children. <laughs> exactly. Do it. Well, uh, where, <laughs> where to begin? Um, well, uh, before I actually started to write my story all together, I was sort of uh, enamored with this one artist that was on the Deviant Art. That uh, well, he started off as a Sonic artist, and uh, after that he progressed into doing his or his own ser uh, series, but. It sort of still looked sort of Sonic esque. Um, have you ever, have you ever heard of Elson Wong? Uh, Elson or Elson Wong? No, can't say that I have. Can't say I have. Uh, okay. Uh, hold on. Let me just quickly find it. Formerly known as Dark Speeds. <laughs> well, uh, he started his own series in uh, some, I don't know, maybe it was 20, 10, 15 years ago. It was called uh, The Grand Ashford Fortune. And let's say that they took my liking to the series uh, sort of to the extreme, to the point that I was actually questioning if uh, it'd be alright if I joined his team. Because I had ideas of my own that I could maybe add to the to the series, but eventually the whole thing fell apart. So let's just say uh, his writing, his early writing was sort of um, well, let's put it like that, amateurish, too much uh, anime tropes. If you get my uh, get my drift. <laughs> All right. Yeah. But, Fair enough. Yeah. But after a while, like when I saw that the series was, it was wasn't going anywhere, but I still had all these ideas in my head, I should have said, "You know what? Why don't I try something, uh, something of my own for, um, for a change?" And since I was sort of uh, starting to uh, get into the whole writing thing uh, somewhere later down the line, I sort of started to get the idea of what char what characters I could have because, well. I sort of like the, um, the, the, hold on, let's just uh, try to put this properly together, um, I sort of like the cast that has a lot of characters, I guess it's sort of a fault because I got used to watching One Piece, mm. reading One Piece, because you got like 10 plus uh, main characters there. And I also was... And uh, counting. What? And counting. <laughs> I feel like the, the crew keeps growing. I mean, they're a pirate crew, so that makes sense. Yeah. Well, it depends entirely on how strong one can get. Because... No, no I'm, I'm, just, I'm not going to go into the discussion because it uh, would go down the rabbit hole with that one. Um... Yeah, and I've also been playing a lot of uh, RPG games on PC, like uh, Dragon Age uh, Origins, and uh, what was it? Oh yeah, Star Wars: The Old Republic and the sequels, the sequel that came. Those are a big uh, influence on me on uh, making uh, cast that has mo more than one, two, or three characters. So that's how I started. But the, I still didn't get the setting at the time. And then uh, I sort of uh, 
get, uh, all sorts of browsing the YouTube one day and uh, a blast for the past came back. Have you ever heard of uh, Xena the Warrior Princess? Hmm. I remember the show. That was fun. Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> oh, that was Hercules. Well, he he made an appearance. Lucy, <laughs> Lucy Lawless. Yeah. Basically, the the intro basically gave me the idea. The idea, and it goes like this. The trumpets play, and then it goes in the time of ancient gods, warlords, and kings. A land in turmoil cried out for a hero, and that's how I basically got the idea for the world, at least mm-hmm. the setting. How I'm here to start it up, and after that, well, there were some characters that I already had from the previous, uh, well, when I was doing that thing earlier. <clears throat> but others I had to uh, work on a little bit. So basically, I got uh, this many. Hold on, let me just. Yeah. They sort of got nine main characters all together. So you got the main hero, you've got the quote unquote, quote unquote Lancer. Do you know what the term lan- Lancer means when it comes into uh, in terms of a character? Mm, no. Silver? I always assumed it had to do with the military role of having a lance and uh, advancing. Well, uh, it's sort of a fall for the hero that's closely allied. So, that, that's basically, imagine uh, Luke Skywalker and Han Solo. Which one's the sidekick? <laughs> the, ones that, the one that does the big boom. <laughs> They alternate. Yeah. Unlike Ray, who's like, everybody's my sidekick. <laughs> oh, yeah. ay, ay, ay. Uh... Ooh, 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 maybe we should critique the character of Ray. Oh, let's not. <laughs> maybe later. Hmm. I, uh, so I know, you got the, I got the main hero, I got the Lancer, I got the short, funny one, I got the... Gentle giant. <laughs> you got the. I've got rhythm. <laughs> you got the uh, what you might call it, uh, stoic type. You got the mindless lunatic. You got the veteran. And you got the um, religious zealot. Well, no, not zealot's not the right uh, word. Uh, what do you call it? Um, a devout follower, yeah, that. And then you got the uh, wise elder. Oh. So yeah, those are basically all of the nine main characters that I have. Some of them are introduced a bit earlier, but others, uh, well, it's a whole lot of. Uh, well, it's gonna take a long time before I even get to there. Oh. But yeah. After that, I sort of got the idea basically on the on the place where they are, and I sort of start building uh, background and uh, history with these characters and how they're related to the um, how they meet the, ma- the main character. There's quite a lot of characters. Mm. You- and one heck of a relationship chart. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't get me started on that. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna. How much sil- red string do you link between the various characters? Oh, man. Does it look like a bowl of spaghetti? <laughs> <laughs> you, you want me to link the characters? If, uh, I mean, do you want me to post? I got a few... Uh, commission requests because I wasn't able to get them done to the extent that I wanted them so I needed somebody else to help me with this one. Hmm. Oh, there you go. So, uh, Let me uh, just uh, find the proper ones. So, Jacob, um, you, 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 you kind of build your own universe and your own story 
and I, I I'm guessing you build everything everything from scratch. So, what's your how how do I put this? Uh, what's the main overarching goal for the story and so on? Because um, as for me, my 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 sh- my shtick is that I don't tell the story. I am part of the story, but I got no idea where it's going because the game master or the dungeon master is um, telling the story for us, and uh, he tell he tells uh, he describes the world. We trash it. <laughs> uh, and and sorry. You're, hmm, sorry, you're asking me about what the armature is. Uh, armature was that? Basically, the point that I'm trying to get across. Uh, kind I'm, I'm kind of, of like yeah. Um, yeah. to act one, like to act one. No need to tell the overarching thing, but like certain characters have certain goals. Like Clutter Step, Clutter Step's goal is to. Uh, discover what Earth Pony is, and also trying to prove himself to Twilight. Well, some days his goal is simply survival. It's your character. It's a bit like Fluttershy. You you know that their growth would do best if they became a more rounded or assertive character, but they may not know that consciously. It's an unconscious journey. Mm -hmm. But with Clutter's goal, it is to find stability, a peace, a place where he belongs. And I've sort of made a game in my head. Okay, Castle Guard has to keep him out because, you know, they're guards. But he wants to see the princess of the castle. How does he sneak in all these times and all the ways he tricks them? Mm. So so that's a meta game. And that just becomes... Yeah, you can you can find the fun in that. So yeah, just just asking uh, you, Jacob, about uh, what's your MC doing and how how does he influence the world or how does the world influence him? Well, back uh, to get back to the original question, uh, Tales of the Ashes is a story about a group of people trying to bring peace and justice in a world enveloped by conflict. As the overarching story altogether, mm. so because you have to add the, because the main question behind this series is, what is person willing to sacrifice in pursuit of peace and peace and justice? And well, just about every character here uh, follows this uh, setup basically. Mm. So what are they willing to do or go through to find peace for the world then? and justice? Mm. But yeah, none of them, none of them follow the peacemaker strategy. I love peace, <laughs> and I will kill anyone to get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I am tempted to. Well, build guns that haven't been invented. Guns haven't been invented in this setting. You don't need guns, Yet. my friend. No, don't worry. You don't need guns, my friend. All you need to do is a. All you need to have is a sword and a can-do attitude. <laughs> Oh, but guns, are, a crossbow. Coming, so guns are coming, don't you worry about that. <laughs> but yeah, crossbows are. <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, as far as... Uh, well, hold on. Let me just find the right image to send for the main character. Uh, just give me a second. So, while, while you try and look for images... Silver... So for Clutter Step, what is what was your future plan for him? Future plan? Well, I got to finish up this Imani thing mm. first. The, yeah, that arc. Uh, and that features a great deal of conflict. He would return to Equestria uh, after to find it greatly changed after Twilight's ascension. Settle down in Ponyville for a while and uh, try to just live his life. Amongst probably one of the most chaotic towns in Equestria. Oh, I, I also am guessing that this is a few... So, he's stuck in, quote-unquote... Um, uh, Far Asia. Oh, Asia. I, I thought it was, um, what you call this, uh, Arab. United Arab Emirates, something like that. UAE. 
Well, I mean, the in the comics, they established the Kuros homeland as the Far Asian shore. So I'm working off that. Yeah, all right. Silver, can I intervene Hi. just a second? Uh, I've been through that name so many times, and I want to ask something. Where is Asia? <laughs> Well, I mean, we have the phrase Eurasia. That is also true. Well, yeah, well, yes, but where, where, where is Asia in the... Hold on. F-A-R-I-S-I. Hold on a second. F-A-R-A-S-I. That reads more like Farasi. Well, there is a far, far, Farasan island... But that's in Saudi Arabia. Because as far as I understand, the, the word uh, Farasi comes from... Uh, it, there, there was, it was word for zebra that uh, people of um, Middle Africa... I, I forgot what, what ethnicity it was already. The, they stopped using it some time ago. Mm, this is news to me. I must... Farasi, Library of... Well, no, that's that's a video game, I think. Hmm. hmm. Zakura's backstory... Let's just see what their... WordPress... Far Asian, F... Then again, given that the Far Asian seems to be located on the Nile in the edge of Egypt, as Arabian points out the troublesome things of... Mm. Well, basically, they kept it sort of vague, but I'm I'm just assuming that they're trying to encompass everything. If if Equestria is America and Canada and probably parts of Mexico, then I'm assuming Far Asia is everything east of there. Makes sense. No, east is where the Dragonlands are, <clears throat> and Abyssinia. I was always thinking they're more like on the west side. Anyway, I saw here uh, in Swahili ah. or in the Ar Arabian, it means horse. Hold on, let me send. But if you on a on a globe, if you tur if you go east long enough, you'll hit the western lands. How does that make sense? Uh, I mean, when you goes, oh my god, <laughs> when when you think about it, right. Uh, Japan and the US that's a far trip <laughs> unless you go right <laughs> indeed but yeah it's uh, yeah it is a pronounced uh, Farasi Farasi okay let's see so it would be Farasian I guess yeah interesting <clears throat> oh, interesting. It also translates as knight huh? with a K. Oh, knight, 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 like the warrior thing. No, more like exactly. a chess thing. More like, I'm sorry, a, oh, a chess. Get it? Because it's a horse. Uh... Gotcha. That's silly. Horses can't be knights. <laughs> Just as stupid. Uh, but anyway, um, Jacob, you found pictures. So this is your character? Yeah, yeah this is the main character out of all the night. <laughs> Lars Alvaro. Mm. I mean, I... I could let you guys read the the whole first three chapters on your own, but I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown on what happened. And it's gonna be spoilers, but whatever. Basically, the story starts with Lars and his grandpa returning to the village where they uh, uh, they encounter him being assaulted by a pair of bandits, uh, but uh, he manages to beat uh, he manages to beat them. But then it turns out that the the woman and the bandits were basically just uh, reconnaissance posing as uh, an event that's happening, and they report back to their bandit leader. And that night, uh, the bandits attack their village, and well, Lars was the one that. Uh, 
is forced to uh, fight and fight back against the leader and their uh, uh, his lackeys. And while he does prevail in the end, unfortunately, there's um, there a price had to be paid. Makes sense. And after that, yeah. And then Larsa leaves the village and uh, goes to a nearby town, and a whole lot of things happen there that, well, let's just say there's something rotten in the sewers. Mm, all right. <laughs> I'd be telling the Teenage you, Mutant Ninja Turtle. Please. Nope, sorry. Oh, boy. So, I mean, I... I probably, if I wasn't uh, such a slow worker on the comic, because I have to both write and uh, draw at the same time, and the drawing part sort of uh, an extremely slow process for me. So yeah, well, it, it's been like five years. If I if I could work faster, I'd probably have a whole uh, volume one done by now. But unfortunately, I'm <laughs> barely halfway there. Ah, oh, all right, all right. So, but yeah, no problem. I'm sure you'll get to it. So here's here's something that I've thought. So Silver, uh, focus the step. What type of character he uh, is he in the character chart thing that you always use? Um, the ah, uh, the archetypal yeah. study. Well, a character can take on many different versions. At first, he is the fool, because. Intentionally or no, he takes away, he throws your life into chaos and gets you to appreciate what you really have. That's part of his odd luck. But as he moves forward and encounters more uh, enemies or, or threats, becomes more of a warrior. But eventually it's connections with others emphasize the lover aspect. And finally, if uh, if the the love story comes to fruition, you become the king. As well, it said that uh, in stories, mm, you know, Arthur and Guinevere, or the Scorpion King and the uh, and the Prophet woman who uh, who sees his coming. It said that the woman accepting the protagonist is reflective of the land itself accepting him. Uh, that's that's a archetypal uh, representation. I'm not sure if women appreciate that because it it means their character is well, the female character is a proxy rather than a character in her own right. Mm, but but it's the prevalent theory. But they can also represent the state of the character, or what she repre who she represents, or represents for. I mean, if she's the princess and she gets hooked up with, like for example, cut the step, would that mean that the nation acknowledges him also? Well, well, that's the thing. That that is what it's meant to represent, but it doesn't necessarily grant a full character to the female protagonist. Think about Princess Peach or Princess Zelda. Mm -hmm. In the early days of the games, how much did they really have a... Uh, do they really have a character? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Mario, the, the, the only... The, the only, um, what you call this, characteristic for Peach back then was she was always away and she bake a cake for Mario. Whoop de doo. Whoop de doo. So, I mean, that can be, that's part of it. Hmm. But I mean, to this, you have to ask a question can a character is, exist solely for a specific, a specific thing? Like, uh, can a character exist solely to. Um, uplift another character or does the other character have, need to have something more? Mm. You can have a character that is meant just to uplift others, but that I find that that often feels like a very stagnant. That's what we call a flat character arc. The character does not really change. They, they know what is right. The story is more about how their 
actions change the world around them. Which means that other characters are having arcs around them. Mm. Uh. Here's an odd, here's an interesting example. A lot of people I've talked to when I ask, what's your character's flaw? They say, oh, they're, uh, they only get angry when they see innocence being hurt. Uh. It's like, oh, you've got the Optimus Prime <laughs> model. You know, his only weakness is his flaw, is his care for all living things that doesn't work fly well if it, it's just optimus in the story but he has an entire cast of flawed uh autobot soldiers around him and he becomes sort of the parental figure as uh as such and so therefore you can have the flat character influencing all the flawed characters around them but it requires a group dynamic in in this case uh probably jacob has the uh, jacob has discovered because um he mentioned he has multiple characters going on for him indeedy Hold on, I'm trying to pick uh, onto the proper images right now, so you guys get a better idea of what you're dealing with. All right. Uh, I sort of zoned out. Can you repeat what was the question? <laughs> uh, the character, which we we'll call this, um, oh, I, I forgot, not personality, but the ar- archetype. Like you, you mentioned earlier on, uh, Chico, about your character being the lancer and so on. But uh, that's something different. Uh, how would you describe that, Silver? Being the ancient? Oh, uh, well, the sage? Uh, no, uh, what, what I mean I'm looking... for this, the description that uh, Jacob used, because he used Lancer um, and so on, because it, it's totally different from what you use. So... Um, to me, they're quote unquote two different things because one is just uh, for me, in my opinion, or from what I understand, it's basically a character type or a character type for that setting or what his job is. But your your explanation is the personality. Or am I off base? Well, it sounds like you're trying to create an archetype system using the words, but first you have to know what they represent. Like Lancer, trusted comrade, as I understand it, Jakob? Yeah. Basically somebody All right. who's, uh, who's on the side of the main character, but he's uh, sort of uh, not, uh, not, uh, not exactly opposite, but uh, he... Well, he would do something that the main character wouldn't think about, if that makes sense. Hmm. So we could take several things away from that. You could he could actually be an artist whose main goal is innovation, doing something that the main character wouldn't consider. Could be a, a hero in their own right, mastery of a certain skill. Or they could be an explorer which where the emphasis is freedom freedom to act in ways that others wouldn't anticipate Mm. those are three archetypes right out of jung's initial 12. Mm. all right all right so the more the more i think about my character greg um he's he starts off as the fool but as oh man as I, I think as things time uh, as time goes on, he he could be the parental figure. What was that called again? The parent or mm, a caregiver, caregiver, providing structure, Probably. and service. That, that that is true. But knowing my player base, they do what they want. <laughs> but yes, that that makes sense. No, well, they do. They do what they want. So, yeah, that would be just the jester, the fool, someone who's for whom pleasure is a high, 
high motivation, yeah. including the freedom to act outside of society's structure. Oh, man. Like, if I were to tell you how the personality of the play group is, like each each character has their own own stick. Um, I, I one character of mine is a quote unquote noble, and he acts hoity toity to his detriment. Uh, one is a vixen who I, I got no idea what the how to put this. I, I got no idea if the character is a seductor or not, but in game. They don't really do much about that, but when they speak as a character, they try to what you call this. Um, uh, they they try to seduce a lot. So, all in all, like I got no idea what my party's doing. Well, it sounds like the, uh, in that case, the character is embracing the shadow of the lover, rather than an intimate, a uh, personal relationship. They are f- trying to fill in a, ge- a gap with multiple, but ultimately meaningless uh, sexual encounters. Probably, that makes sense. Yet at the same time too, um, a lot of our player base here are keeping secrets. So it was like, hmm, this is going to be interesting. Oh, well, well, every archetype can keep secrets. Oh, yeah, that, that is true. I- I- I'm sure that Clutter Step has secrets too, right? Oh, yes. So, yeah, like I mentioned before, this is going to be very interesting. And as as for Greg, uh, to, to be honest, I'm just rolling with the punches and seeing where this goes. And from what I can tell, in one arc of the story, um, they traveled with a princess and they keep her safe and whatnot. And the princess traveling with us found that she she's weak and needs to how I put this um, needs to get herself stronger and become a warrior. And Greg, the char- my character, uh, after everything is done and she's safe, give us the princess one of his weapon, which is a lightning javelin, and tells her that get good with it. Soon, uh, later on, when you when you know how to use it, I will challenge you to a duel. This sounds. Um, I I don't know what you. Okay, what what do you think, Silver? What what, what do you think of that? Well, the princess is considered. Uh a young version of the queen, which may tie in more with the ruler providing structure. Uh, Part of the princess archetype is to leave the comfort and safety of the familiar and go out and experience the world so that she can become a more well-rounded individual. But her capacity to use a, a weapon isn't necessarily as important as her ability to inspire uh, a nation if she can develop leadership skills I think that's more important than brandishing a sword or in this case a lightning javelin she may find her strength lies not with one weapon but with her ability to sway and encourage others that, that I mean it, in a European setting that sounds I, I guess any setting would that um, that makes sense but I don't know. I mean, the, the GM played her in that sense where she needs to use a weapon. And later on, I think about a year later, in real world time, um, the princess seems to level up and learn how to become a general. Which is kind of... Uh, so, mm, it, it, it was a happy information to get, and mm, but it can al- but it can also be troubling. A general knows how to fight a battle, but how, what do they know about building a school or providing an infrastructure in peace? Mm, but from what I can, sorry, go ahead. right now. 
so it sounds like the princess has learned an important skill set, but what? A, but is she done uh, learning in order to become a proper leader? From what I understand, uh, she started out as a pacifist where she wanted to become a monk, but certain call this certain things happen to make her go into the role and yeah fr- from what I can tell and from what I understand uh, she's forced into the role and Greg is just giving her some what you call this inspirational motivation <laughs> well then uh, part of part of any d and d or role play is improvisation. I mean, I'm throwing out ideas where her character can go, but ultimately it's up to the player with some mm, puppetry from the DM yep. to decide where they end up. That is true. I mean, if she if she chooses to renounce her royal title and live a different life, well, that's something else. Probably. I mean, uh, the princess is controlled by the GM, so we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I... I I am fascinated where this goes because um, by the by looking at what the GM's doing, uh, he's playing her safe. Where yeah, she she's taken up the mantle of general and leading and giving inspiration to the group while learning herself, and it seems that the uh, army or her army is. Devoted to her. So yeah, th- th- that's a fun concept to see. Mm, but is she done growing? There's the question. All, really, all characters are on the path to what they call individuation. Mm. Uh, realizing your full self, a, a balance between uh, logic and emotion, aggression and pacifism. Uh, or some other extremes uh, being well being able to connect with others but also being able to focus on what needs to be done possibly at the detriment of others mm. yeah and I I totally agree with that Like, and, and just seeing that or just you know what I, I can't wait to see where this goes because this is going to be fun like you, you gave me some ideas in my head to hope, uh, hoping that the GM will take this and uh, use it in the future. Yeah, so so we'll see how this goes. But yes, uh, yeah, like I said, let's see where this goes, and I, I'll I'll inform you with what Greg's been doing later on if there's any update because right now he's just there. Uh, supporting the players, being himself. Uh, but yes, Jacob, you posted pictures. Yeah, this is basically the entirety of the main cast now. You've got uh, Marquis Vienna, who's the who's the aforementioned Lancer. Then then you've got uh, Lao Tian, who's uh, well the short, uh, fun, uh, funny girl. Then you've got Grimora, the sperm whale, who's a who's a gentle giant. Then there's uh, Phyllis. Uh, I don't know how to describe her. I was trying to look up the tr- uh, the tropes.com to describe what uh, how to uh, how to describe her character, but honestly, I I don't know. She's basically the spirit warrior, Aztec, if you're uh, as well. Then you've got uh, Gul Vidmart. He's the war veteran, where bounty hunter veteran, to be more specific. Then you've got Pawn, who's uh, he's basically um, a demon soul that's possessing a corpse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, probably smells mm-hmm. terrible. Well, he is a dog. <laughs> Hammond's Hem- Hem- probably that he oh, he's also wet. <laughs> anyway, then there's uh, Matissa Yangfrau, who's the um, what do you call it? A warrior, uh, priest, priestess, and last but not least, there's uh, Calarea, who a dragon, who's a sage. 
in, in, in character stage. Hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, these are basically all the main characters. But uh, currently, I do not have the. For the first time, I do not have a plan to introduce uh, any one of them. Well, no, technically, I did uh, introduce Kalaria, but she's all only as a uh, sort of foreshadowing for what's to come. But yeah, it has been a lot of work uh, putting these guys together. Mm. And don't make and don't ask me about the red lines. And where do I tie them up? <laughs> so, Jacob, having so many characters at the same time, uh, isn't it kind of hard on you to... Uh, how do I put this? Uh, is, it hard, is it hard on you just to get the story going? No, so the story sort of... Well, here's the thing. When you're writing, you sort of already need to have the ending in mind. Because uh, if if you, if you just start writing, you don't know how the story ends. Well, let's just say that there are so many web comics on the internet that they should have ended a really really long time ago, and they still keep going, and it doesn't seem to end. <laughs> because I already have set up ending for this, but it's gonna be well. Let's just say it's gonna be a long time. Because the way I have it planned, the series is gonna have three parts. Each part is gonna have about nine volumes, and each volume has about nine chapters. And each chapter has uh, up to 20 pages or more. Hmm. So yeah, this is a lengthy process. Ah, uh, alright, alright. So... Hmm... So, give me a second just to ponder. Um, so, for... Wait, what? Hold on. Was was the original question, uh, do I have difficulty with uh, pu putting so many characters on? Yeah, I th I, but I think you already explained it. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a passive process. For some characters, well, I, I have the basic uh, personality on. Uh, I mean written down, but how they indirectly uh, interact with uh, events, well, that sort of, uh, it's a, a work in progress. Mm, all right, all right. So, Silva, any questions for us, if you have any? Mm, here's a question for everyone. How much is an homage versus a ripoff? Mm. Hmm, how much? I guess uh, homage is sort of a reference to something, but a ripoff is like something going to like almost uh, beat for beat. Like the characters are the same and the plot is sort of, but not exactly the same. I don't know. Something well, like that. Think, think of the... When the Aragon came out, people really enjoyed it, but when they saw the movie, they were all like, oh, it's Star Wars with dragons. Wasn't and the, it's... Wasn't the movie sort it, of it, watered down compared to the book? Very, very. But the central premise is Star Wars with dragons. So, is it homage? Is it... Uh, is it a ripoff? There's the question. How much individual, how much can it can stand on its own even if you don't know what it may be referencing? I don't know. I think that this is sort of uh, the, the creator doing the... Uh, I, think, I think it's my own enough that some, somebody wouldn't consider it... Uh, too close to something else that already exists, so I I wouldn't call it neither a homage or a ripoff. It it depends on the person, to be honest. Like, how how do I put this? Like, there, there there's a fine line between homage and ripoff because, for example, like um I, I my my character like my character Greg, he is an homage to a, another character that I. Am inspired by because um, the uh, 
the the YouTube channel slash group called Critical Role, uh, their first campaign, they had a Goliath barbarian named Grog, Strongjaw. And my character here was, I, I, um, I, I'll admit it, was a one-to-one copy of it, of him. But as time goes on, I develop certain aspects of him to make him totally his own character. So I would say that Greg here is a homage to Grog. Already? But as for a ripoff of something? Oh, man. See, see, here's the thing where it gets difficult because there's no original idea anymore. So anything that you do is something or is similar to something else. Like, <laughs> for example, if you look at any isekai story, it starts out almost the same where main character is ejected from the party because he's useless. Now, what does what's the difference between um, this and what's going to happen later on? Because like it it all starts the same. the The only difference is what's the um, what you call this? What's the uh, theme for the show's going to be? He got ejected because he's too weak. Suddenly he became too strong, or suddenly suddenly he's too strong because of this or because of that. I mean. I I quote unquote read a lot of uh, manga and yeah they they sound so similar that it got me confused like wait this isn't this the thing I read before oh no this is different but it's so this it's so much the same. Well, to be honest, I I steered I've steered clear. A lot of manga and anime has started to feel very samey for me. Yeah, yeah, I do. I don't blame you, especially. When it comes to manga, like ma- manga is the thing where it's how how do I put this? M- manga has this thing where they need to have that hook asap to get people in, and they- they're following a kind of a trend. When it comes to anime, there's a bit of work put into it where, yeah, if this idea is popular in manga or novel form, they'll probably do something with it in anime form. Well, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of fan service oh, along oh the way. God. Oh, I'm so tired of that. But yes, that, that's also true. Uh, but... I mean, depending what genre you're watching. It, to be honest... If you're talking, if you're if you're watching something that's specifically shown and jump oriented, then that's to be expected. Uh, to to be honest, if we're just talking about anime, every show will have a beach episode where the characters are in some kind of swimwear or some kind of uh, hot springs. That is going to happen. I can promise you yeah, but that. that doesn't necessarily facilitate the uh, fan service. Oh, it is. It is fan service. Like, why would they go to a hot springs? Why would they go to the beach? Like, like they they could have just not go there, right? And yeah, could have. But, but but in terms of manga and so on, they went there. This is also depends on the story where it goes from there, but they just went there to have a vacation, and you get what I mean by okay. This is just go- them going to have a fan service episode or fan service chapter. Talking about fan service, have any of you guys done anything to that? What fa- made a fan service of our characters? Having a fan service chapter, like they just went to, mm, they just went to this or that, and something similar to fan service. I'm not gonna answer that question. <laughs> so yes, then. Can't 
can't say that. Don't, I, don't put the don't, words don't. in my mouth, Norman. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 erroneous <laughs> assumption. Uh, but for but myself, I I can't say I've done that. Mm. No. All right. All right, all right, makes sense. Yeah. But if we're talking fan service, I think we've actually hit the bottom of the barrel. Mm, uh, I don't know how to respond to that because I do understand why you want to do that because of money. But at the same time, too, I don't like it. <laughs> but is it silver? Is it is it really bottom of the barrel? Ultimate, here's the thing. There's nothing, I don't consider anything truly wrong with fan service until you realize that's the only thing that they're offering. There are a lot of enemies that is just uh, yeah. panty shots, a fa swimsuit, bikini, fan service, fan service, fan service. Oh, yeah, those. In that case, yes, I think you've hit the bomb barrel because you're saying that's all my audience wants. You're essentially being Michael Bay. Yeah, and also by that point, the character, the character personality or the character, whatever you want to call it, is just, ah, this person has striped panties versus this person has lace panties. Mmm. Uh, yep, so there's not a lot of actual characterization involved. Yeah, and that is... Not a lot of d deep thought. Oh, and, oh, God, yeah. I I totally understand you, man. Like, but but at the same time too, when you when you analyze in terms of personality weakness and whatnot, you do have the trope of the lady character having the small breasts versus one uh, being envious of the person with the bigger breasts. Um. <laughs> I have something like this going on. It's a trope. <laughs> it's a trope, but I, I, I mean, I think a deeper insecurity would be that they're that they feel some shame in their body. Yes. Or that that so they need to address that shame. And I've never known an anime that really went that route. They just had the brief breast comparison and then it was mostly forgotten. It plays off as a joke most of the time. And yeah, like I said, I'm tired of it. But anywho, I think that's about it. Unless anybody wants to add anything more to it. I don't think I hear anything. Alrighty then. Silver, anything more? No? Nope. There are a lot of ways to to discover your character, and there are a lot of tutorials out there. So anyone who is uncertain, just do a search on YouTube or Google will will help guide the path. Mm, that is true. So, Silva, so, um, just for a, what should we call this? Uh, just, uh, just to sum it up for you what's your what's your way of building a character and how would you recommend people uh, do it uh, following your style well well i'm not going to recommend the file my style because that is my style for some people it it's a different style you you need to find your style in order to create a character and it's going to vary so try different approaches try watching a show and trying maybe to come up with a variant of that character try coming up with a scenario and the character you'd like to see in uh tackling that scenario or maybe you want to make a statement and uh, or have a character that represents an idea then you craft a character around that idea the big thing is to always ask deeper questions uh, put on your best Buttons and Mindy impersonation. Why? <laughs> why? Because that's how you get at the heart of a character. You keep asking, why this? Why that? All right, all right. I mean, that also goes for the world building in general. Exactly. 
uh, right? Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Those are good advice. Uh, Jacob, any advice for the general audience? Well, for the general idea of how to create characters, I can't really give, but if you're planning to do it, uh, if you're planning to make characters for a story that you're doing, well, first figure out how the story is going to start and how it's going to end, because the entirety is purely dependable on this. And after that, uh, well, just go with it. I don't know how much to say, but well, if you got the idea what character, uh, what characters like, put him in this situation, then think about how uh, he or she would react. Ah, all right. I, I think those are good advice. And as for me and what I can give for advice in terms of building a character, <sighs> to to be honest, um, decide on how you want your character. <laughs> like like the guy said, um. What's the scenario here, and what's the end game for them? But if you're just a person, if you're just a person that just want to build a character and stockpile them, I say just use the D and D character sheet and see where it goes from there. Because uh, when you take a look, see at um, just building a character for D and D, you you'll get things like. Uh, uh, give a second. Uh, you, you get things like strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And this can be a guideline for what your char- uh, your strength and weakness for your characters. Um, let's just say your character is not strong. So he'll have, they'll have problems with doing physical tasks. And let's just say they have a high charisma, even though they're not strong, but they can talk their way in and out of situations. And if their intelligence is mid, they know stuff, but not um they 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 know stuff, but not well enough, and so on. So building it from there, in my opinion, has well. It gives you a broader. I'm sorry to put this. Uh, it gives you a broader stroke of options to pick and choose. And let's just say if your character here is all strong, no charisma, but he wants to swoo the ladies, how would you do it? He doesn't have the charisma for it. It'll be very entertaining to see what you can do with it. Isn't that right? Well, you can see uh, what if a girl goes for a dragon's head. <laughs> Here, I killed this for you. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, that oh, that would be fun. Like, oh, the barbarian courts a lady with the dragon's head. And, oh, they can go so many ways, Silver. I like this idea. <laughs> I like this idea. <laughs> uh, boys. But yeah, um, th- that's my tip for you. Um, character builders at home. So I think we should end it here. Agree? Yep. Sure. All righty then. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbsshowgmail.com and you can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at NBS show and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Silver, where can the good people find you? On the Twitters, the DeviantArt, and the YouTubes under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, if you do a search for After the Fact Silver Quill, you'll find me. If you just do After the Fact, you may find a news program. But I was here first, dang yeah, it. Yeah, go for the original. And, and there are uh, links to my Patreon and Kofi from the YouTube page. I also have my weekday puns. And I'm looking forward to seeing folks in Schaumburg, Illinois for Winnie City. Yay, that'll be fun. That's my hope. And also, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Twodkad, on the Twitter user under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tom Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. 
And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on talesoftheashes.com. And unfortunately, by the time this podcast comes out, uh, my convention is going to already end. So, sorry. Uh, it's okay. They still can read the characters that you talk about here in Terminal Rising. Uh, Terminal Rising, right? Yes. Yeah, see, all win wins. So go check it out, guys. Anyway, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash mbsshow. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and myself, Like. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya! Adios. Bye bye. So, have you ever wondered if your character would come alive and what would they say to you? Well, considering that every writer is supposed to put their character through hell, I think the first thing they say is, Oh, you bastard. <laughs> oh, so true. So true. What's a real desk? What, where, where, where's my happy ending?